postseason college football. Tonight, the Liberty Bowl Classic is renewed for the 14th time as the Iowa State Cyclones, led by George Amundsen, clash with the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The Liberty Bowl, another ABC Sports exclusive, is brought to you by Chevrolet. The key to a new Chevrolet could be the key to a happy holiday. By Borkham Rift Tobacco, imported from Sweden. Dr. Graybull free smoked pipes made for each other. By Noxzema Medicated Shave. The closer you shave, the more you need creamy, soothing Noxzema. And by Brute for Men by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. Brute by Fabergé. And here by the mighty bend of the Mississippi River in Memphis, Tennessee, out on the field in cardinal and gold, we have the Iowa State Cyclones, coached by young Johnny Majors. This could be the last game for Johnny Majors at Iowa State University. Bud Wilkinson, Bill Fleming, and I are here as we now look at the mobile mascot of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech, coached by young Bill Fulcher and his first year as head coach, coming into the game with six victories, four defeats and a tie. One of the defeats was over Duffy Doherty's Michigan State Spartans. Iowa State and Georgia Tech. Iowa State out of Ames, Iowa, with five wins, five losses, and a tie. That tie against powerful Nebraska, 23 to 23. So here on ABC, we kick off the major college bowl season of 1972. A near capacity crowd here on an evening that is perfect for college football, a temperature about 43 degrees. You see the Georgia Tech band forming the tee to our right or the south end of Memphis Memorial Stadium. They are ready now to accompany former Metropolitan Opera star Marguerite Piazza, our national anthem. Memphis-born Margarita Piazza here at Memorial Stadium in Memphis. A salute to Liberty tonight in the 14th annual Liberty Bowl as we'll return in one minute to Memphis. This is a $20 pipe, and this is a $6.95 Dr. Graybow pipe. They're both made from the same fine imported briarwood. But while it might take weeks to break in this $20 pipe, you can enjoy your Dr. Graybow pipe right away. Because all Dr. Graybow pipes are mechanically pre-smoked. A $20 pipe, a $6.95 Dr. Grabo pipe. You decide. Dr. Grabo pre-smoked pipes, the perfect Christmas gift. Dawn at Malibu, and your first look at the new 1973 Chevelle Malibu. New improved front bumper system, interior comfort, and improved handling. There's a new top-of-the-line Chevelle, too, named after another famous beach, the Laguna. We could have named it Long Beach, because it has more legroom in the back seat than any Chevelle before. Or Muscle Beach, because it has a big 350 V8, 
front disc brakes, wide stance chassis design, and an improved front bumper system covered with urethane, which resists dents and dings. But we named it Laguna because it's so distinctive, so luxurious, especially with the new swing-out strato bucket seats you can order. When you cruise the Pacific, from Malibu to Laguna, see if you don't agree when we say, ABC Sports is proud to continue its Monday night showcase of football. Tonight's college football. The normal crew of three that you have heard uh, during the past few weeks, we've turned them out to pasture, at least for this season. Bill Fleming, Bud Wilkinson, and I are here hoping to enjoy this game with you. And Bud, I mentioned Johnny Majors. The rumors are persistent that uh, he will move to the University of Pittsburgh. Well, they still are rumors, Chris, but I believe that they're strong enough that uh, you see Johnny Majors here on your screen that tomorrow we probably will have a confirmation that he is leaving Iowa State. And the question, of course, is how does it affect tonight's game? Uh, can go one of two ways. Uh, his players uh, know that this move is perhaps in the wind. Uh, Johnny's not going to talk to them about it until tomorrow morning. They may decide to get together and make one last great effort, or you can take the reverse side of that and say, well, gee, if maybe the coach is leaving, the game doesn't mean all that much. And, of course, Georgia Tech, uh, some upsetting news there just prior to the uh, Georgia game. Well, their great quarterback, uh, Eddie McShane, who is the holder of 15 school records and the leading career ground gainer at Tech, missed practice for three days prior to the Georgia game and was dropped from the team. Uh, he will not be here tonight. Uh, we've had uh, some problems with the other black members of the Tech team wondering whether they should play. Uh, they've decided that they should, even though there were some rumors that some of them had physical threats of violence uh, made against them. Uh, some of the players, however, will wear black armbands tonight. Uh, their feeling on this being that they don't want to take sides in this dispute, but they do want to recognize the problems of blacks uh, throughout the world, and this would be a symbolic gesture on their part. Again, uh, this could go either way. It might uh, bring the tech team closer together because McShane won't be there, or all of the uh, lack of concentration on the game may cause them to play not as well as they could play if McShane were there. All right, thank you, bud. And nevertheless, we now go down on the field to meet the stars of our telecast from Iowa State and Georgia Tech, introduced by our colleague Bill Fleming. Bill? Thank you, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the lineups for tonight's game. First of all, for the Cyclones of Iowa State. At defensive safety from Burlington, Iowa, number 37, John Schweitzer. At right cornerback from Uniondale, New York, number 35, George Campbell. Defensive right end from Guthrie Center, Iowa, number 79, Marv Crooker, the Monster Man from Oak Park, Michigan, number 53, Ken Caratelli. Fire! Defensive left tackle from Delray Beach, Florida, number 78, Larry Hunt. Middle linebacker from Hudson, New York, number 55, Ted Jarno. At center from Struthers, Ohio, number 54, Dave Pittman. At offensive right guard from Wichita, Kansas, number 75, Gary Murdoch. At split end from Edmondson, Arkansas, number 85, Ike Harris. At flanker from Valdosta, Georgia, number 81, Willie Jones. At quarterback from Aberdeen, South Dakota, number 12, George Amundsen. And the head coach of the Iowa State Cyclones, Johnny Majors. Coach. And now for the Yellow Jackets from Georgia Tech, a defensive right tackle from Atlanta, number 45, Tim Macy. Outside linebacker from Macon, Georgia, number 35, Steve Putnall. At linebacker from Rome, Georgia, number 32, Gary Carden. At linebacker from Durham, North Carolina, number 60, Bruce Elliott. At left defensive back from Baldwin, Pennsylvania, number 43, Mike McKenzie. Right defensive back from Charlotte, North Carolina, number 23, Randy Rhino. At split end from Atlanta, number 85, Jim Robinson. At guard from Vicksburg, Mississippi, number 70, Glenn Costello. Offensive tackle from Savannah, Georgia, number 74, the co-captain, Rick Lance. At tight end from Tallahassee, Florida, number 86, Mike Oven. At fullback from Lookout Mountain, Tennessee, number 42, Rob Healy. At quarterback from National City, California, number 11, Jim Stevens, and the head coach, Bill Fulcher. Now let's go back to Bud Wilkinson, our ABC telecast booth. The game tonight really is the power and strength of Iowa State against the speed and quickness of Georgia Tech. Uh, Tech will be outweighed about 20 pounds a man on both offense and defense. Uh, Iowa State, Coach Bob Devaney of Nebraska says, is the most physical team we've played all year, and that's quite a compliment indeed. 
Cyclones will operate out of an I formation with variations. They have three truly splendid pass receivers and number 85 Harris, number 91 Kreppel, and number 81 Jones. The key man in their attack, of course, is George Amundsen, number 12, their great quarterback. Amundsen is on the left of the screen there. He's the fourth leading total offense man in the country, averaging 271 yards per game, running and throwing the ball. Their defense is led by Corniff, as you can see, number 55. He's an inside linebacker who has made 79 unassisted tackles this year and has had 65 assists. The uh, Georgia Tech team playing without their regular quarterback, as we mentioned, will have number 11 at quarterback, Jim Stevens, a 6'1", 190-pounder, who's a junior college transfer, has had very little experience, and the pressure is really on him tonight. The leader of their defense is number 23, Randy Rhino, a defensive halfback who has made eight interceptions and is leading the country in pass interceptions with eight. And now back to Chris Schenkel. And there's the opening kickoff as the toss was won by Georgia Tech. They elect to kick because of a 10-mile-an-hour wind undoubtedly, which in this case was to their back. It goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Iowa State. If you're watching in color, they're in Cardinal and Goal out of Ames, Iowa. Coming into the game, this is the second bowl uh, since Johnny Majors has taken over as head coach. They played in the Sun Bowl last year. And here you see the offensive line for Iowa State. And it'll be interesting to see the backfield now. Number 12, Amundsen. A great athlete, strong. 81 is Willie Jones. And uh, 48 is Larry Marquardt. So from the 20-yard line, it's a first and 10 for Iowa State. The Cyclones may have lost the ball. Let's see. And Georgia Tech recovers. Chip Everhart came in to recover that loose ball for Tech as Moses Moore of Miami, Florida fumbled it. So a tough break for the Cyclones and the Ramblin' Rex of Georgia Tech have it at the 18-yard line. First and 10, bud. Bill Fulcher hoped that Tech would get off to a good start uh, with the trouble that Tech has uh, had. He was hoping that the Cyclones wouldn't blow him out of the park in the first quarter, and that fumble certainly set them up in business. From the 18-yard line, it's quarterback Jim Stevens, number 11, sending a man in motion to the far side. From the I formation, a good four-yard pickup on the play. The basis of the Tech offense will be the quarterback option play with the sprint out passing and the drop back passing. They'll throw the ball, or at least they plan to, about half the time. They believe that Stevens is a fine passer, and he has a great split end, Jim Robinson, who has caught 48 passes this year. All right, it was Southall, the fullback, who uh, carried on the play for three yards approximately, so it'll be a second down and six at the Iowa State. 15, back to pass. Well, it's good he had it plenty high enough and hard enough because there were about five defenders for the Cyclones. It was intended for Oven, number 86 of Georgia Tech, so it brings up a third down and seven. Third snap from scrimmage coming up. You just join us on the opening kickoff, going into the end zone, coming out to the 20 for a touchback. Iowa State fumbled on the very first play. It was recovered by Tech at the 18 of the Cyclones. And here is Stevens, number 11, from National City, California, coming over the near sideline as time has been called. The referee indicating it now as Jim Stevens here on the near sideline. And on the far right of your screen, that is young Bill Fulcher, the head coach of Georgia Tech. We'll return to Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee, for more action in the Liberty Bowl after this message. Started. Uh, they're always looking for someone to take your place, but I don't think they made that fellow yet. And uh, I like to compete and I like to win, and I think that's the reason I'm still playing the game. And uh, around uh, our team, uh, they refer to me as the old man, but I know I can compete with the kids on the field, and I think I can compete with them off the field. And that's where Brute comes in. It stays with you, it hangs in there. I use it, I like it. Brute by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. Number 37, Bill May. Almost and anywhere you travel on business, you'll find a Holiday Inn close by. And in every major city, you have a choice of two or more. Chances are we can get you closer to your business. And that's important when people are depending on you. We can get you closer to your business. Holiday Inn, the most accommodating people in the world. Back again in Memphis, Tennessee, the 14th annual Liberty Bowl. After 47 seconds on the football clock, 
And one fumble by Iowa State on the opening snap. Georgia Tech now in the white. Have a third down and seven at approximately the 15 and a half. Jim Stevens, along with Healy and Southall, those are the two setbacks behind him. 89 is, is Owens. Let's see what Stevens will do. To the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Hit hard on the play. By number 53, Caratelli, who is from Oak Park, Michigan. He is a senior monster man, and he played his position well. Both teams will use basically a 4-4 defensive alignment. Four men on the line of scrimmage and four linebackers with three deep secondary. And with a fourth down and about seven coming up, we're going to have a field goal attempt by Bobby Thigpen, who's kicked three of four this year. And it'll come from about the 32-yard line. Correction, it wasn't Thigpen that did the booting. It was Bonifay, and it's good. Bonifay comes through for the rambling wreck, and they have... Taking a three-point advantage of the fumble on the very first play following the opening kickoff. And kicking the ball 32 yards. And, but uh, there you have the underdog leading. We talked uh, about the difference in size, Chris. Uh, Tech's offensive line uh, interior averages 216 pounds, and Iowa State on defense is 223 against them. The Tech defensive team averages 215 pounds along the line, and Iowa State's offense 235. So it really is a question of quickness and speed on the part of Tech against the size and strength of Iowa State. But we indicated that Tech had won the uh, toss and elected to kick. Of course, they still have the wind to their back. And it's Wheeler, number 10, that'll do the booty. And that's uh, the Bobby Dodd technique. Uh, kick and let them make their mistakes. It's part of the tradition at Georgia Tech. All right, number 81 is a fine split end or flanker back, Willie Jones, who is great on kick return. Let's hope he gets the ball to see him run. Out he comes to the 5, 10. Lost his footing on the natural turf here in Memphis, Tennessee. Bringing it out approximately 18 yards from the end zone, of course, and the play will actually start now for the Cyclones from Iowa State at the 13. The quarterback, George Amundsen of Aberdeen, South Dakota, who last year as a tailback played that position, hopefully to help his team gain over 1,300 yards. Quite an athlete, 13 letters in high school for the 13, first and 10 for Iowa State. Look at that man go. And he brings it out to approximately the 23. Perhaps enough for a first down. It's very, very close. Maybe just a bit short. 13 minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Georgia Tech is in the lead by a score of 3 to nothing. The latter part of the season, Iowa State was severely hampered by injuries. Their great receivers, Harris and Kreppel, were both out. And Mike Strawn, number 33, their tailback, who has a 4.7 yard average, was slowed up. But uh, they're all three in the game at the moment. 31 more, 48 Marquardt, 81 Jones on a second and one at about the 22 of Iowa State. And Moses Moore, a 200-pounder from Miami, Florida, a junior, number 31, carried on that play, and the referee, John Miskowski of Oklahoma City, indicates the first down. Dave Pittman, the great senior center for Iowa State, is considered among the better blockers in the country. You can see him here as he turns Joe Gaston. He should have raised up just a little bit higher. Had he raised up as he had that good position, he would have kept Gaston completely out of the play, but the block was...